Okay, so hello, welcome, thanks for coming out for the sunshine. Welcome to the second event in the 2016 Summer Festival of Pedagogy Pop-Ups. So this one, it's not that fun, not yet. <laughs> this one is about what works in call or computer assisted language learning. Um, and it's based on an event that I attended in London back in June, which a lot of people couldn't go to, and I said at the time I'll come back and kind of debrief. So this is a very heavily digested version of that talk. And the purpose of the event was to summarize research and key insights into language learning as assisted by technology, second language learning. And obviously this is important uh, because with all the new technologies available to language learners and users now, as one researcher says, communicative competence cannot possibly be defined in the same way as it once was. So there's been lots of studies done in this area, both quantitative, so trying to find kind of measurable differences through numerical data and statistical analysis, and more qualitative, so using open-ended, non-numerical data and non-statistical analysis, things like questionnaires or interviews. And the presenter, this guy called Luke Plonsky and his colleague, Nicole Ziegler, they were trying to find out what we could learn from the huge body of quantitative research if we put it all together. And this is called a meta-analysis, as I'm sure you know. So you take a bunch of studies and then you study the studies and try to find out what they all say. And so people have done this before in call. So they've looked at, for example, a whole bunch of studies about game-based learning. And what Luke and Nicole did differently was they took a bunch of these meta-analyses and analyzed them. So they did like a meta-meta analysis. And so in total, they surveyed 14 meta-analyses, which in turn looked at the overall effects of 408 primary research studies into technology-assisted second language learning. That's a whole lot of quantitative data, and much more than we usually get because a lot of these individual studies are quite small. So they wanted to know, specifically, compared to face-to-face -face contexts, how effective is computer-assisted language learning in promoting second language learning? And they also talked about methodology and how well the studies have been conducted, but we only have 10 minutes, so I'm not gonna talk about that today. There is also a full video of his original presentation with his slides. Uh, available online and a journal article that they published on the same topic. So later I'll put this presentation and his and the article all on SharePoint and I really recommend you go and look at the full thing if you're interested in knowing more. He also seemed like a really switched on guy and very open to sharing and collaborating. So if we want to know more about this and find out more, I'm sure he'd be happy for us to talk to him. So here's what they found. First big headline there was a statistically significant and substantial absolute effect for call. So in other words, technology helps learning. And he was quite a, not skeptical, but he's not a huge technology fan. So he looked at everything very objectively and said, well, actually, there, I'm, I'm surprised that there's such an effect. And secondly, there was a statistically significant and more moderate relative effect. So compared to face-to-face, -to -face, technology helped more, which he was also surprised to find. But before we go any further, because that all sounds really exciting, we go, hooray, strategy, yay. Some caveats and limitations. It's possible that some of these effects are slightly overestimated, uh, partly because very few studies actually looked at long-term effects. So your typical study goes, you do a little test, then you do something in the classroom or with technology, and then you do a little test. You do a post-test immediately. And unsurprisingly, you often see an effect, because as we know, teaching helps learn, we think. But very few of the studies did long-term post-tests, so it's not always clear whether that learning stayed over time. Um, most of the studies followed instruction over a couple of weeks. So we need to be careful when we interpret. We need to think, do we want to rush into tech solutions if it's based on research into a couple words over a couple weeks? So there's always a little bit of a balancing to do in our interpretation. It's also possible that some studies which didn't show any effects weren't reported because people usually don't publish failures. And it's also possible that the primary researchers weren't very objective, like the secondary researchers were, because we just can't be sure. Maybe they wanted to find effects because they love technology. 
So there's always some balancing to do in our interpretation, but generally there were visible effects and some were substantial. So I'm going to give you three examples of areas where the effects could be seen. One was in glossing, uh, which to define if you don't know, basically glossing is where the focus of study is reading comprehension or vocabulary, typically. Then key words or expressions can be glossed or accompanied with a definition or maybe a translation, uh, maybe a, a visual support like a video or an image. And so that could be plain text or it could be hypertext. It could be multimodal. So you might have a reading text with a keyword and if you move over the keyword, uh, a picture pops up. So there's picture and word and definition or something like that. And so the study showed a significant relative effect for technology here compared to paper-based glossing. And this is especially seen for vocab learning, not so much for general reading comprehension, but for learning new words, having that gloss in context with technology was seen as effective. And interestingly, the largest effects from glossing came from first language glossing. So coming back to things that we've talked about recently before and published on recently before, this use of the first language actually in this case was more effective than having a second language gloss, um, even if it was with visual or audio. The studies also showed that beginners seem to benefit more than higher levels from the multimodal, the hypertext glossing, so with visual support. But there were very small sample sizes in those studies, so really we would need more research to know if that general pattern were true. And what's really important to remember is that the effects cited in these studies were for groups of learners. So typically what they would do is give a group of learners some reading or vocab work with glossing and another group without. And the effects are per group. So what they don't show is things like how fast the learning happened or they don't show individual learning. It's very much overall a group made X progress compared to this group. Secondly, there was computer-mediated communication, which showed effects of technology, obviously, with the computer there. So the definition of computer-mediated communication, or CMC, it's typically text chat, uh, but it could also be email, or maybe video, I record a video, I send it to you, maybe Facebook. Sometimes it's synchronous, so the people are communicating live in real time. Sometimes it's asynchronous, so maybe they send an email and the person reads it later. And the effects are there, but they're small relative to face-to-face. -to -face. And there are lots of, lots of variables. So for example, peers, peer interaction here, had a greater effect than teacher interaction. So students can benefit without the teacher themselves providing the interaction. Again, beginners benefit more from advanced learners, uh, more than advanced learners, I should say. And what I was interested to find is asynchronous communication had a greater benefit than synchronous. So doing that communication with a time delay actually aided learning better than the immediate communication. Maybe because people have more time to think, more time to process, we can only um, interpret. And there was also more benefit for learners in a foreign language setting, so studying somewhere where English was not the local language than in a second language study, uh, setting. And again, possibly because they typically have fewer opportunities to be using English generally. We just don't know. But there needs to be more studies, or particularly studies that aren't just grammar-based. And finally, mobile-assisted language learning and game-based learning, which for some reason this meta-analysis group together. So this is the area that definitely needs the most more research. There's very little out there. But the key finding is that meaningful games were much more effective than just drill-based games. And we could ask, if it's a drill, just repeating, is it really a game? But some people include that in their definition. And the interaction, crucially, is more effective with a person. So most games will involve interaction of some sort, like with the, with the machine, with the computer. But in this case, we're talking about human interaction. So reading kind of between the lines and interpreting, uh, interpreting and extrapolating all this, we could say that the ideal game features are interaction with a human that is meaningful and more engaging, not just a drill. But that doesn't mean there's no room for <coughs> drills in learning. But in this case, that seemed to be the most effective uh, intervention. So as with so many things, more research is needed, uh, especially in mobile and game-based learning. 
But it does seem that technology can have beneficial effects on second language learning. And importantly, when we're thinking about this, we need to be asking the right questions. So not saying, is this effective or not? That's too simplistic. We need to be thinking, how effective is it? Or what's the relationship between this thing and this thing? So that we can understand better how to make the right decisions. And before we throw away all our more traditional approaches, we also need to remember that very few studies of this type look at long-term learning gains. So we need to proceed with caution when we're combining technology and pedagogy. Thank you very much.